You know, this Henry Cavill and Liam Hemsworth situation just requires more attention, I believe. So that's what the video will be about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. You know, not everyone believes that this is going to work, that, uh, that the audiences are going to stay there and they're going to be as engaged with a new figure as an old figure. But there's more to it than that. You know, why does this happen? Is it just money? Um, where are they tired of, and uh, from uh, Henry Cavill's point of view, he has to think, you know, to think I'm not holding up my end, I'm not engaging enough. And from Liam Hemsworth's point of view, I think he honestly has to be feeling like, am I going to live up to the uh, stature, to the to the performance, to the audience uh, expectations that uh, go before me? So, you know, we'll just look into all of that, maybe delve into their personal lives and uh, do a long, deep dive into Henry Cavill, Liam Hemsworth, Witch Witcher. All right, now, so Heaven and Earth Tarot. This is a very uh, gothic-looking kind of a tarot, just in that it's the, it's kind of sepia tones and uh, noir or reminiscent. And uh, so, but it's a beautiful deck, and I think it's perfect for this series, for this subject, you know, Witcher. Uh, to be honest with you, I've never seen one episode of that uh, series, not one. So I don't have any clue what it's about. I don't know um, anything about it. And I know very, very little about, even though having done a couple of readings on them, about uh, Henry Cavill or even Liam Hemsworth. I honestly really have to focus to say Liam Hemsworth because I always want to say Chris because I think that's more in tune with my generation, even though not really, but I mean, so yeah, Liam Hemsworth is uh, only for me, this little Australian little brother of Chris. But um, so we're gonna see what the cards can tell us about these two guys. But first, before we do anything, let's have just a moment of meditation. So we'll see how this is going to go for these two guys. Um, I think maybe a couple of three card draws and then a longer draw after that. Um, so, um, you know, Henry Cavill, why is it just too much? Has he been doing it too long? Is it that much of a strain on him? And perhaps he couldn't uh, see himself living up to the image much longer? Or I wonder. You know, if you're doing something that's so physical and um, and that's something you have to keep all the time, number one, maybe you get tired of it. Number two, uh, yeah, as you, you know, become just five years of difference in your age can make a big difference in how you physically um, can keep up. And um, and maybe it's just time to, to maybe not get uh, completely, totally typecast. Um, so, yeah, let's look at this from uh, Henry Campbell's point of view and see if 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 it's his if he's happy that this is gone is it now his preference even if it wasn't his preference or even if it was his preference maybe the cards can tell us that so in three cards uh, one Henry Cavill you know does this suit him personally is this change suit him does he feel that it suits him the first card is the Queen of Pentacles you know, this is interesting that we're talking about pinnacles because pinnacles are, are, can be money or value or worth. And uh, all those things come into play for this fella. So the queen of pinnacles, how important is she in making a decision? She's holding uh, a lot of uh, power as to how this value, how this money and how this worth is going to be spent. And if, if the women are as drawn to Henry Cavill as uh, the men watching him, uh, conquer these situations 
then maybe this is that feminine energy around his true value, perhaps in the real world and how he's considering that. Uh, maybe this uh, card leans towards his fan base and how they um, feel about the situation and how he would interpret that. But it's an interesting card to start with, the Queen of Pentacles. So almost the most valuable um, emotional card in a, in a worth kind of a way, not being cups or hearts, but yeah. So then the next card for Henry Cavill, does this suit him personally? Is, um, ah, this is fascinating. So this is the two of the uh, of pinnacles. Again, we're still talking about worth. And you know, this is kind of balancing a thing out, but what's amazing about this is for what we're talking about, it's called in this deck, Heaven and Earth Tower, this is called Harmonious Change. So I'm asking the question, does his this suit him personally? And the very next card I get about, you know, worth is Harmonious Change. So, it's, you know, if I didn't draw another card, that'd be yes. And then the final card, for this is um, so this eight of wands uh, okay wands are actions plans forward movement forward movement I think being key here this is a lot of stuff happening at the same time swiftness is what this deck calls this card and it could be that this happened sooner than maybe he would have chosen it came on kind of sooner or, or faster than he might have thought but in the long run sometimes when, when life happens you have to sit back a minute and say okay yeah, that, that seems like the way things should have happened, even though I was regretful uh, while it was happening. So I think uh, it suits him personally now. Liam Hemsworth. Liam Hemsworth, the little brother. That's how I think of him. So, and it's kind of like he's, this is kind of the same thing. He's stepping into someone else's shoes. Uh, when he became an actor, uh, you know, he had his brother really to live up to in so many ways. And now as uh, stepping into this, uh, this, this role as the Witcher, he's got some shoes to live up to. So is this, does this suit Liam Hemsworth? I think it does because he certainly had to agree to the rigorous uh, routine that's going to come with being this figure and then the potential issue of being typecast which his brother would have been able to give him some advice about perhaps so Liam Hemsworth in three cards does this suit him personally and it's fascinating how how the cards can come in on a question like that and, and give something uh, meaningful so does this suit Liam Hemsworth personally in three cards what can the cards tell us you know, if I have more direct questions from you, then that's the questions I'd be asking. So make sure you, you tell me in the comments what you want me to read about and, you know, what, what questions you want asked specifically uh, of a public nature, not on not personal readings. I don't do personal readings. So peace. Interesting. This card is called peace in this deck. This is the two of swords. This is making a choice. So he is at peace with having made that choice interesting so he's considered it he's gotten all the advice that he uh felt like he needed to and he's at peace with that decision the next card is the moon secrets being revealed perfect card for this major arcana this is a 10 15 16 18 of the major arcana so almost toward the end of the journey and uh, secrets being revealed so this being the the middle card almost a signifier for what's going to happen is all the detail all the nitty-gritty of being this character, being in this role. That's what's going to uh, come to, to light now that he's at peace with making that decision. And then the final uh, uh, card for this, and I love this, so Liam Neeson is this, um, Liam Hemsworth, Liam Hemsworth is this, uh, does this suit him personally? So the five of wands, wands are actions, plans, forward movement, but this card in this deck is called Strife, and it typically usually means, you know, pointless, um, bickering or arguing or indecision or not knowing what to do it's, it was is not worth having that so here we have all this indecision all these questions all these competing movements really being burned up by the action of it happening and so whatever those regrets were there wasn't a, a reason to have them so Liam uh, Hemsworth was uh, was he at peace with this yeah he had to make that decision now all the nitty-gritty the secrets of, of it having to be this person and what it's going to do to him are going to come out and it will be fine because all those regrets or all those questions or all those hesitations if there were some uh, were pointless now let's do 
uh, six cards, so that's going to be a dyadic cross. Six cards on the Witcher series for these two. The Witcher series for these two. And again, if you'll tell me in the comments specifically what kind of questions you want to know, then I'll draw on that because I'm sure there are more personal things that the audience would want to know about these two characters. Um, I don't know anything about this series and very little about these two people. So, um, if this is interesting to you, which the viewership seems to see, you know, tell me that it is, uh, then let me know what you want me to, uh, you know, what do you want me to, what do you want to know about these guys? Um, so six cards for the Witcher series uh, with the situation that's going on. And uh, remember, if you like these cards toward the end of the video, I'll tell you a little bit more about them. Uh, it's just uh, when I used to be just a viewer, I liked to see or wanted to see more of the cards that a viewer, uh, a tarot reader was using. And that's why I put that in these videos. No other reason than that. And so six uh, cards. And also, of course, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Uh, the Signifier card about the Witcher series with what's, what's happened, what's going on. Okay, the Signifier Ah, this is interesting. So this is the Five of Swords. Swords are actions, plans, forward movement. No, I'm sorry. Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. Truth, um, rules, and law. Justice, I don't know about this. But uh, but the Five of Swords is an abuse of power. So this being the signifier, this is telling me that the powers that be in that series have decided maybe, um, you know what happens in life. A lot of times uh, in your work, um, you want to get being paid more, Okay. And oftentimes what happens is they say, you know what? We paid you enough. We're not going to have you anymore. And they'll hire someone else to come in and do your job for less. Okay, so uh, could that be something of what's happened here? An abuse of power. Defeat is how they define this. Well, the challenge to that, if that's what's happening, is, um, oh, establish strength. So this is the three of wands. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. The three of wands is long-term planning. And the call it's called here established strength. That's the character. The character ha is established. And um, so this abuse of power is actually uh, challenged by the established strength of that character, which is significant. We come right up to the three. Now, the basis of the whole thing, oh, look at this. If this isn't a Witcher image, I don't know what it is. This is called the Princess of Wands. Wands being actually plans forward moving, the princess being almost the strongest card. So this is that feminine energy. This is that viewership. This is that attraction to the character, and it's the whole baseline of this. So the character still has a very strong Princess of Wands baseline to its uh, likability. And then the past of it is the perfected success. This is the Ten of Cups, Cups being emotional, compassionate, heartfelt situations, perfected success. So Henry Cavill brought that character to a perfected success. And it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a big uh, leap for Liam Hemsworth to step into that perfected role. He's not stepping into a role that was failing and he has to try to fix it. No, this is going just perfectly. He is similar enough in in the character and how yeah this is perfected success it's in the past so that's happened so that's what he's he's leaving a perfectly tailored coat and then in the sky of this thing the very best uh, that you could hope for this is called arrest from strife so arrest from strife and it's the four of swords truth justice rules law and you see someone here is, is having the good sense and this could be either of them actually looking at it but having the good sense to lay down take a rest not move too slowly uh, be, think about what you're doing. Be careful when you get up because you could get hurt. And then the final outcome for this character of Witcher is, uh, wow, victory. Victory. So it's the character. That it's almost, it is like James Bond in a modern day sense. Yeah, the character is going to succeed. And so that means that Liam Hemsworth is going to succeed. Very interesting. So sometimes maybe the studios do know how to best leak out everything or uh, squeeze out everything from a series or a character to their benefit and their their investors' benefits, I suppose. So very interesting reading. Glad that I did it, actually. Gosh, you never know how these things are going to come out. And it's always interesting to see uh, what the cards have to say. Uh, more is interesting, though, I think, is your interpretation. And I really look forward to seeing what you guys have to say about uh, how the cards come out and what it means to you. So do that. And uh, thanks a lot. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hey. So this is the Heaven and Earth Tarot by Jack Sifroth and Jamie Elford. And uh, these are Los Scarabio cards. And i got to tell you, these are great. Um, they come in a cool box with that magnetic clip on the side, which I like. The guidebook, 
that there that comes with them is very useful. It's just a full size book that you could uh, sit and have a cup of tea and and read through it. The cards themselves, and it's a color book, which I appreciate. It may not look like these are in color, but this is how the cards are kind of muted with little pops of color here and there. And there's lots of nice suggestions on how you might use these cards uh, in uh, the divinations. And then the cards themselves are are very nice. The um, I've not put them in the box well. The little discombobulated uh, here today. Um, I want to spread them out so that you can get a look at them and see kind of what cards look like. And although they're kind of uh, and in that noir style where they're black and whitish with just some hints of uh, a very uh, shaded uh, color here and there. Um, you can see that they're gorgeous cards to use. And um, so, very nice. Uh, I do this so that uh, if you don't look at cards very often, then you can uh, have a look at almost this whole deck, you know, because you can stop the tape and really zoom in on some of this stuff if you wanted to. And uh, it's a nice way to mix the cards. If you're doing a reading for someone, you could have them uh, spread them out this way to kind of uh, get the cards mixed up. And um, that way, uh, everybody's kind of participating in the process. So that's the Heaven and Earth Tarot. Some cards that I love, love, love using. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So, ciao for now. <laughs>